So this video is about phase changes. So we can go from a solid, which I'm going to put down here, which just has that vibrational motion. So I've got my six molecules of oxygen from the previous video here. And we can turn that into a liquid. Now once we get from a liquid, we go from having just a vibrational movement to having vibrational and rotational movement. So now our molecules are kind of sloppily arranged. They're spreading out, filling up the bottom of the container, because they're a liquid now, right? And this phase change of going from a solid to a liquid, so I'm going to label this as A over here, okay, it is known as melting. It's also known as fusion, so that's a new term that you're going to need to know. Melting and fusion are the same. And I'm going to give you a new term. There's two terms we use in chemistry that describe whether energy is going in or out. And those terms are endothermic and exothermic. So how can we tell something's endothermic or exothermic? Well, simple rule here. As you get more degrees of movement, the amount of energy, or what they call potential energy, increases. So we can do this as increasing PE, that's potential energy, not phys ed, all right? And so this phase, A, which is melting or fusing, because we're going from something with less energy to something more, energy must be absorbed. And this makes sense. If you want to melt an ice cube, well, you don't put it in the freezer. You put it in the hot sun so it can absorb some of the heat from the surroundings. That's why it makes your drink colder, because it absorbs heat from the liquid in the drink. And so that's what we call an endothermic change. So anytime we're going this direction, the process is going to be endothermic. So we're going to write endo here, just keep it short, endothermic, and therm refers to heat energy. So we're absorbing heat energy from the surroundings as we melt. Okay, what happens when we go from a liquid up to a gas, which has even more potential energy? Well, it does because all of a sudden these molecules, not only are they vibrating and rotating now, they're moving around going bing, 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 banging into each other, right? And they're just completely separated from each other, which means they have, have more potential energy, right? This phase change or state change state is generally called vaporization. Now, there's two types of vaporization. One of them is called boiling. That happens at one specific temperature, given one particular pressure. But the other one is called evaporation. And evaporation occurs below the boiling point temperature. So a, a puddle will evaporate. You're not going to burn your, your toes stepping in a warm puddle be just because it's evaporating. The water there is not boiling. But it's still going from a liquid to a gas. And it's still, yes, that's right, endothermic. Now, the third type of endothermic change is this one, C. This is called sublimation. Okay, the verb for that would be sublime. So you say something sublimes, okay? All right, that means it's going from a solid to a gas. And that's what dry ice does. Dry ice is carbon dioxide. Solid carbon dioxide does never turns into a liquid at normal temperature and pressure where we live. So it goes directly from a solid to a gas. And because it's going towards a gas, which has the most potential energy, just like these other phases, all three of these phases are endothermic. But the good thing is it's easy to remember because the way this diagram, whenever you're going up on the diagram, you're gaining energy, and endothermic means that you are absorbing or gaining energy, so it's easy enough. Now, there are phase changes in the opposite direction, right? You can turn a gas back into a liquid, right? You can turn a liquid back into a solid, and you can turn a gas directly back into a solid as well. And those phase changes have names too. We're going to label, wait, let's do some labeling here. B, this is C. We'll call this D, E, and this one F. So let's start with D. What do we call it when it goes from a gas to a liquid? Well, you know this term. You've seen it on your windshield, right? Or you've seen it on the grass in the morning. Or you've seen it when your breath comes out of your mouth. Okay, and you can see your breath because the water vapor that's leaving is undergoing condensation usually. And this is what it's called when something goes from a liquid, from a gas to a liquid. E is when things go from a liquid to a solid, which I think everybody here knows when you put liquid water in the freezer, what does it do? I got it. It freezes. So it's called freezing. It's also called crystallization. And that's when you go from a liquid to a solid. The last type of change here is going directly from a, uh, from a gas directly to a solid. Students love this phase change because they, the only time they've ever really seen it 
is when they see that fluffy stuff. Because when, when water in the vapor state, that's like a gas, right, turns into a solid directly at low pressures, it skips the liquid. And what you end up with is not frozen water. You end up with this fluffy stuff known as snow. Now, this is called deposition. Since everything going this way is endothermic, right? Then everything in the other direction, this way here, is going to be exothermic. Now, and the way you can think about it is look at the prefix. Therm refers to heat energy. Endo means heat energy going in. Exo means exiting. Heat energy is exiting. Now, you might say to yourself, well, when, when things freeze, they don't feel like there's heat coming off them. And that's, prob that's true, because if you're holding an ice cube, it's never going to freeze, is it? Because the heat's going to go from a hot temperature to a low temperature, from high to low. That's the way heat goes. And the heat's going to leave your hand and go into that ice cube, and it's going to melt. Right? If you want to freeze water, you stick it into a place where it's cold. And because the water's warmer than the freezer, the heat leaves the water, and the ice, is, the ice cubes, the liquid, freezes. If you need to understand what I mean by exothermic, Think about what happens when you have storms. Whenever these phase changes are happening, whether it's condensation or snow, if it's a really big storm, you hear things like lightning and thunder. There's wind. Well, that's the release of energy. That's the release of the potential energy as those phases of matter undergo those changes and move towards types of matter with lower energy. Well, the energy is lost or leaves or exits in the form of lightning and wind and things like that okay and sound waves so all the energy leaving you're you're seeing that those are the exothermic phase changes stop